like uh, advocacy, right? Like uh, a stand, uh, even uh, um, creating uh, an example towards other companies and even addressing and being an example on creating So, of course, so in fact, um, uh, that's uh, uh, that, of course, everything starts with the leader, right? And there's the conscious, we call it like the conscious, much more than just. Uh, and again, I just want to reinforce there's a lot of names right now for leadership, you know, leadership, types of leadership. Conscious leadership is not the type of leadership. It's leadership by itself. So, but it's the, the leadership that is required to face the challenges of 21st century right now business. So, it's the the it it, it it's embedded in the, in the principles that are required for now for a, a leader to engage and embody. Uh, so, it's not the type of leadership. Right, so that's one of the things that I want to address, and of course, a conscious leader um, puts once he's in a in a leadership role. One of the principal things that uh, conscious leadership does is to create and propel the concept of self leadership on the others uh, inside the organization and multiply, multiplicate that factor. So uh, the role of a conscious leader is to create and empower others inside the organization to become leaders in their own role. So of course, through that, when this leader embodies those principles and empower the others inside the, or the organization and as a replication also towards their partners, so the stakeholders that are outside the organization itself, of course, this creates a conscious uh, organization by 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 principle, right? Because conscious leaders, first and foremost, are focused on on values alignment. That's one of the things. So, values, recognizing what are the values, and it's not just the values as a statement that is good on the brochures and the website of our organization. No, it's really <clears throat> through a process that involves all the organization to understand what are the values that make sense to that organization and engage all the organization in alignment with that, those values. That normally, for example, us in Amarna, we did that exercise. We addressed what were the personal values of each one. Of course, we are a small organization. It's, it's easier to do this. But even in bigger organizations, when there's a period of reflection that this conscious leader addresses and the importance of this, of each um, element of the organization, address their own personal values, and to, vi to see that reflected as organizational values and, and conceive through that process of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of defining the values of the organization, Al align always the values of the person with the values of the organization, that's one of the roles of the conscious leaders. So through that is already pushing the organization to become more conscious. And of course, one of the biggest roles is to not only people engagement to in this process, but also the employees engagement, the internal, what we call the internal stakeholders of the organization, but also to engage the external stakeholders of the organization on being in alignment with the purpose of the organization and the values of the organization. That's a, one big role of the conscious leader on the organization. So, of course, through that, we are taking steps towards not only the conscious leader, 
but to building a conscious organization because <clears throat> it's replicating the, the, the characteristics of the leader towards everyone inside the organization and even outside the organization. And, and that's the organization, the, the, what it comes out, the culture of the organization, the, the organizational culture of the organization starts to be transformed because people um, inside the organization are also being transformed. So, of course, a conscious leader propels a conscious organization and even the, the, the other way around, right? Because like it's a, a, a single to the plural and the plural to the single per se. So it's a, something that feeds, that continues, uh, flows and feeds by itself because the moment you uh, are a leader that nurtures and empow empower um, your employees or the, the internal stakeholders of the organization to become more conscious, that also replicates and creates uh, uh, an energy on the organization that even push more further the conscious leader. So it's um, um, a mutual feeding and nurturing in this process, right? So, so basically, I think that, of course, a, a, a main step for organization to become conscious, which is much more than just being sustainable, is being, it's leaving a, a it's not just about, because sustain, sustainable is addressing to uh, doing less harm. Instead, conscious is what I said in the beginning, is doing good by being better. So the principle of a conscious organization is to leave a positive legacy in the world. It's not just about doing less harm. So, and that implies not only the, the environmental aspect, it's all about the social aspect, it's about the economical aspect, and it's uh, the community aspect as a whole. So... Of course, when 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 this is what it matters, is totally different from the the approach that we have the, that we have been used to or addressing um, until now or normally. See, I would say. Do you see? Uh, do you see uh, already conscious organizations function? Do you have an examples or examples? Yeah, there, without, of no, course, there are, much. I don't want to mention m many, but there are already some organizations that want to take the, a little bit a step further of just uh, regulatory compliance on social issues or environmental issues, as so many companies are uh, right now um, addressing there. There are organizations that we see that are in a way of really embodying more the conscious principles. I would say that, for example, the company uh, Patagonia, you know, that company that is related with uh, outdoor activities, they are a good example because they not only, <clears throat> they have, for example, what we call regenerative practices towards the environment. So regenerative practice is not just about oh, measures that are doing less harm to the, to the, or less impact to the environment, is how they do positive impact. What this means, restoring ecosystems, replenishing ecosystems. So this is uh, going a little bit beyond what is the tradition right now of certain organizations. Other type of things that they do, which is, um, a characteristic of a conscious organization is the fair label practice, which is very hard when you have a very big or uh, complex uh, um, value chain. And to address this, not only in your directly, most directly stakeholders, but in all the value chain line, and they are doing measures to addressing this. So again, one organization uh, is not isolated and has a ripple effect 
and many other organizations, and they are conscious of it, and they are addressing these issues. So that's one of the things. Another thing they address is like the, uh, it's not about only, <coughs> again, it's not about only, uh, bless you, it's not about the, the mm. profit. It's about also how we create um, like advocacy, right? Like a, a stand, uh, even um, um, creating a, an example towards other companies and even addressing and being an example on creating and acknowledging the community in the, even policies on on new regulations or new standards that really um, are required to to so that these kind of issues on natural resources on fair label or all of this can be addressed. They create awareness regarding this. So it's not just an, they focus on their product development and selling it. It's much more than that. Uh, it's about addressing a culture or, or a way of living as a society too. And one other thing that they do really well, at least they are known as this example, is the community engagement, which is one of normally what communities, local communities, are one of the stakeholders that are forgotten. And this example of this company, Pentagonia, one of the things is they work a lot with local communities towards engaging to addressing their issues um, uh, on the on the communities that they have uh, the, the, their service and product to have more impact towards. So that's one of the things that they do, and that's with those examples, all those practices which go much beyond and just doing less harm or you know reducing emissions or uh, managing their waste or even energy efficiency or uh, social responsibility policies and all of that, they are doing other kind of addressing other kind of measures that create uh, a positive end impact a legacy and through that they could be considered and evolving in their in their level of consciousness okay so i don't know if i actually answer to the question so it's a, it's a great so. example and it's an example against the uh, terrain or the trends in the industry to support uh, fast fashion which is mm -hmm. known for pollution Exactly. So uh, one, of, one of the things that you can address is like an organization that creates standards and serves as an example to um, among its own industry. And Patagonia has that, uh, has that, uh, is, that, is that kind of example. So you, you touching, uh, among you many also, others. You're touching also on the mission of uh, of AKFI actually to set standards for the supply chains to be more efficient. And it's reliable. not. And you, and uh, just to I just want to add this. Normally, these kind of examples from other peers inside this, in this uh, specific industry sector are much more engaging than regulations. So that's okay. that's this advocacy role that these organizations uh, or the pioneering, you can say it, most pioneering organizations are the ones that are pushing a little bit ahead uh, first. They have this uh, advocacy role that can be much more engaging toward, uh, among their peers than regulations because in regulations, Normally, the, 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 the experience that we have working with organizations that they feel they are being forced into it. They don't feel inspired by it. And many times they don't understand why they are doing it and why they have to do it. And so it's like you demanding to, some, to a kid to do something that he doesn't understand why he has to do it, right? So regulations have this factor. Once, when you are giving an example and 
showing the positivity that you have as a overall, as an organization that that really empowers you, makes you thrive even more, that's when the others uh, mm, see that and, oh, I wanted to do that too. I want to become that too. So this role uh, that goes a little, that even of organizations that go beyond a little bit the regulations and compliance issues, are are much more important than just you know the ones that are strict to the to the regulations and the standards and country mm -hmm. legal issues. You mentioned purpose, so purpose is not you know the purpose of regulation is to it's usually uh, regressive in the sense that regulations are put in place after exactly yeah. Changes are happening and are not going in the right direction. That's when at least governments should intervene. We can have a separate yeah. discussion if they do or don't. Uh, yeah, so that's why think... it's so important, even just to mention, it's important even all the all the stakeholders in place, so policy, politicians, governments, whatever, uh, universities, um, academia, a business, um, a investigation centers, uh, local communities, all this should be working together. That's the thing. There's no actually conscious leadership or conscious organizations if all the players or the all stakeholders don't push themselves out to be conscious. That's the thing. So this so, is, it's it's not just a matter of individuality anymore. It's about empower the individual, which could be the organization itself, but empower the whole ecosystem towards becoming conscious. That's the, that's the, that's the way that, uh, for example, nature works. And we have to learn from nature to work that way too. So there's no, for example, single tree that works as a single tree and stands out. It, it needs the all the ecosystem. And, and we, as humans and and uh, as organizations, we have to learn that from, for example, from nature, which is the best teacher on this regard, in my yeah. in my opinion. One of, one of the questions, and I'll turn more uh, to Isabella on this: How should we train the younger generation? Isabella, maybe. Yeah, Liliana. I guess the younger generations are the hope, and they are. Uh, natural in this, like you mentioned, they, they're just uh, born to be more purposeful. They don't buy, they don't buy anything less than that. Uh, what's your advice for for them, for professionals who look to develop a career in conscious leadership type of role and sustainability focused uh, type of role in the future? Well, first and foremost, I will repeat myself, but I think mm -hmm. mostly for these generations, for what I see and what I acknowledge, require a lot of compassion. So compassion towards what was in the past. Look, the, you know, late, um, older generations, they do, they did what they did because they, it's what they knew at the time. So really understanding this and maybe that's what was in the past was was what was possible and what lead to today so instead of having a very a complaint or against to it have a really understanding cultivate compassion towards what it was but through that what i can do better and i think um self develop working towards self development in independently of uh, because being a good professional it's not about only and we see that m more and more it's not anymore about only technical skills it's much more than that i i say that normally is about character and attitude so developing this attitude and character it's much more important, which is totally related with conscious leadership. The, through that, of course, learning other skills, it's not just about sustainability. 
sustainability isn't a box or environment isn't a box and social issues is not a box, closed box. It has interconnection with several aspects and several issues. So the more you know about business, the more about you know about communication, the more, the, uh, more you know about engineering even. Uh, if you are able, if the new generations are able to cultivate themselves even in these topics, it's it's a it's a goal because one of the critical things that uh, we really have to engage more and more, and younger generations have more the, this role because they are going to be the leaders in the future, is to have this kind of very systemic approach that I said initially. So this is very important for the skill to develop that we were not used to. We are we were. To teach, we are taught to very narrow, me in school, very narrow, narrow thinking. This systemic thinking, which is very much required right now because uh, the, the problems are so complex, um, it's, a it's a thing that is a skill that has to be developed. So I would say compassion <laughs> developed as internal and personal growth. Um, the, as a skill, uh, systemic thinking, having attitude and character, which is and ha always be in alignment with your own purpose, which is your own purpose and values. And I think with that resolve of if you fail, you uh, go up again. Never, never, never be tormented by the wind or the challenge that happened. It's a, it's a growing thing. Um, so I think that for <coughs> developing these kind of skills, which, uh, which are more technical and more personal, are very important. Um, and of course, one of the things is always empower the own self and also empower others uh, that uh, you impact or... Uh, the people are, that to impact the people around uh, around you. So that's that's the things that I I would say that's most important for younger generations. Thank I would you. say. I think this is important for everyone, not just the younger <laughs> generation. Yeah, <laughs> I I was gonna add to that. Yeah, this is very powerful, and thank you for ending the conversation on such a great note. And uh, yeah, I think this is the soul of your business as as well. By the way, I don't think the yeah theoretical uh, thing of course those are also important in developing strategies and methods to implement conscious leadership everything you mentioned throughout the conversation but i think the end is the soul and the, the vision then yeah. the of your business uh which is uh, very uh i'm very inspired and i think everyone should hear about it and start practicing and apply yeah. that to themselves and that relates to the organization Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, both of you. And uh, thanks to our audience for tuning in. And uh, make sure you join us every week for a new episode of AKFI's Actionable ESG Talk Series, where you can gain new perspective on how to mitigate risk and create a value by integrating ESG and digital transformation. Until next week, goodbye for now. Bye, Liliana. Bye, Manuel. Bye. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. Thank you, Liliana. Bye. Thank you, Thank you so much. See you. Thank you so much.